Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 11th, 5.51 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. July corn futures up seven cents at 782 and three quarters. December corn up five and three quarters at 724 and three quarters. July soybeans up 12 and a quarter at 1604 and a half. November beans up 13 at 1467 and three quarters. July Chicago wheat up 22 cents at 1114 and three quarters. July Kansas City wheat up 18 and a half at 1193 and a half. July spring wheat up 13 at 1226 and a half. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it, guys. Uh, leave me a rating or review if you have not already. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. My subscriptions continue to grow. I appreciate it. Uh, like the videos. Leave me a comment. Help me to grow this thing. If you need some additional assistance from me, go to my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service. I send a ton of information to my premium subscribers every single day. You'll get my morning email which covers a ton of ground, uh, overnight headlines, weather maps, graphics, charts, all my grain marketing recommendations. You'll also get my subscriber-only videos. There's a new subscriber-only video every single day. I did one yesterday. It was called, Is This 2008? And I did some uh, studies uh, looking at 2008, the corn market and the stock market, tried to identify some similarities between this year and 2008 and uh, some levels in the stock market in particular that could perhaps trigger some selling in the corn market. Uh, this was an interesting video. I had a lot of positive responses from this. So if you guys are interested in this premium deal, you want to see these videos, uh, they're all mobile friendly. They go straight to your cell phone. It's a piece of cake. 50 bucks a month. Cancel at any time. No other feet, no other obligation. We've got rains returning to the northern plains here this morning. This system will bring additional rains to uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, parts of South Dakota, and elsewhere here over the next couple of days. And then you've got kind of an additional system behind this uh, beginning tomorrow and into Friday. So you're going to see a good chunk of North Dakota and Minnesota in particular see an inch of rain or more in total over the next seven days. You have some pockets here in southern Minnesota that may see uh, quite a bit more than that in particular. We've seen a lot of talk, and I've heard a lot of talk among traders recently regarding uh, acreage switching, switching out of corn acres and into other crops in these areas, and also uh, talk about prevent plant in regard to corn in these areas. Uh, to give you some specifics here, in regard to crop insurance, your final corn planting date in most of North Dakota and most of South Dakota is May 25th. That's two weeks from today. May 31st is the final planting date for uh, most of Southern Minnesota. Now, USDA projected in March that these two states, Minnesota and North Dakota, would account for, in total, 11.4 million acres of corn. That's a lot of corn. 3.6 million in North Dakota and 7.8 million in Minnesota. So there is some concern here that you could lose corn acres in the Northern Plains, Southern Minnesota. Um, I have a couple of, of thoughts on this. First off, the March uh, acreage numbers, the planting intentions report in March, it was probably wrong. It's it's one of the worst reports that USDA puts out. The survey responses are atrociously low. Uh, it's not a reliable report. So I think you've got to go with the idea that something in that report was probably wrong. The second thing that I would point out, perhaps, is that the corn market has acted very, very well relative to the soybean market uh, since those surveys were taken in March, which leads me to believe that you could see corn acreage expansion versus March intentions in other areas, you know, maybe maybe areas in Illinois or Indiana or Iowa or places like that. The financial incentive to increase corn acreage uh, has been there for the last couple of months now. So there's a lot of, of variables here. I don't have any big, bold predictions about uh, what's going to happen in those areas. Maybe you do see some reduced corn acreage, but again, Maybe March intentions were wrong. Maybe they were too low to start. Um, maybe there's additional corn acreage in, in other areas. So, I mean, you could very well end up with a situation where you see reduced corn acreage in, in, say, North Dakota or Minnesota, but still end up at a planted acreage number in corn that's higher than March intentions. That's a very real scenario. So there, there's a lot of... Uh, possibilities here guys this is is fairly complex it's it's not super easy uh, to figure out by any means we do have uh, some USDA reports out uh, tomorrow monthly crop production and WASD uh, in this report in particular USDA will give us our first look at the new crop balance sheets so new crop corn new crop soybeans new crop wheat uh, both the US and the world USDA in this report I'm not going to run through all the numbers but they're going to have to try to uh, project the Ukraine situation, how it's going to affect global corn, global wheat, 
uh, exports, um, all of those things. What sort of crops will they produce in Ukraine? Uh, those are all huge question marks. So I think this is going to be an incredibly interesting report. Um, is it going to be a big market mover? Uh, potentially. But um, you got to keep in mind that when you, you look at the new crop balance sheets for like U.S. corn and soybeans, they're going to use trend line yields. They're going to use the March acreage intentions numbers. Uh, demand is extremely difficult to project. So this thing's kind of a shot in the dark, but you've got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere, and they will start with uh, new crop corn and soybean balance sheets tomorrow morning. And I'll talk about this report a little bit more here the next couple of days. Monthly CPI inflation data will be released uh, this morning at 7.30 a.m. Central. This will be a very closely watched report. Ahead of that report, traders expect annualized April CPI at 8.1%, which would actually be down from the 8.5% print in March. So traders essentially expecting that inflation has perhaps peaked at the consumer level and that uh, levels may decline slightly this month. Financial markets remain generally very nervous regarding inflation, and I think more so in regard to the response from the Federal Reserve. Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester said yesterday that she would not rule out a 75 basis point hike forever, and that is a contrast from Powell's remarks uh, last week. So this will be a closely watched report. Uh, is inflation, uh, has it actually peaked? I don't know. That kind of brings me to my next story. U.S. retail gasoline and diesel prices hit record high levels this week. According to AAA data, the average U.S. retail gasoline price hit 437 per gallon yesterday, up from the previous record high of 433, which was just earlier this year. Retail diesel prices hit a record high of 555 per gallon on average across the United States. Today, they have continued to trend higher amid incredibly low U.S. inventories, reduced refining capacity. One analyst estimates that the world has lost about a million barrels per day in refining capacity since the pandemic. Many analysts don't see any resolution to this shortage until at least next year. Refining capacity needs to improve in the Middle East in particular, and OPEC has generally just stuck with modest increases to output. In uh, related news, Middle East oil giant Saudi Aramco surpassed Apple to become the world's largest publicly traded company at one point this week. So uh, these oil companies in uh, Saudi Arabia and in the Middle East in particular are making a ton of money here with these high oil prices. Um, uh, and that's part of the, the reason why things are so high. They don't want to pump more. They're making more money here with reduced output and high prices. Uh, cattle market and feeder cattle market both had some losses yesterday. Uh, not a great looking trade. There was some cash, 138 to 140 in the south. I don't know if that's enough to establish a trend, but maybe that's off a little bit versus last week. The U.S. dollar is marginally lower here this morning. The s and is up 43 ahead of the cash open. The Dow Jones up 270. Bonds are up. Gold's up 10 bucks. Crude oil up $3.47 at 103.20. Three, uh, that June WTI contract tested out some chart support overnight and was able to hold. Everybody have a great day today. I'll talk to you guys same time tomorrow.